So I recently bought this Acer Helios 18 off eBay. Uh, it's refurbished. It's got a 4080 inside of it. Uh, but the thing is, I kind of want this laptop to last me like seven years if I can, maybe longer. And what I want to do is kind of future proof it or at least keep it from breaking down. And to do that, I think I'm going to need to change the thermal paste inside because the thermal paste that comes stock is actually liquid metal. And liquid metal is like ass, <laughs> especially for the purposes of a laptop. So, you know, and because of various reasons too, right? Because it's very application dependent. Uh, the lifespan isn't very long. You know, you'll, you'll turn on your PC, the dial will heat up, it'll cool down, and that, that in itself will squeeze out the liquid metal eventually. You're gonna have to reopen it, repaste it, do all this shit. I'm not really trying to do that. So I'm gonna try to open it once and put this thermal paste called PTM7950 inside. Uh, Linus Tech Tips has a video you can watch. It's pretty interesting. And as well, I'm gonna have to change the thermal putty because you don't wanna open your shit up, you know, and then reapply it, and then there's gonna be air bubbles inside your laptop, right? So I'm gonna try to do that. Uh, what I did so far is I just took out these screws off the back plate. Uh, really, there's a video already on YouTube of a guy at least taking off the back plate and like some other stuff, like the battery and the RAM. No one really goes in depth when they're taking out the uh, heatsink. So I figure why not do it myself? So we're gonna try to do that today without fucking anything up. So we'll see if we can do that. So the screws are out. I gotta come in here and try to pick off this back plate. I've got like a guitar pick type thing. I'm not gonna lie, that shit kinda nerve wracking a little bit. I have experience building a PC, but I've never opened up a laptop before. And I don't know where is the best place to start this. All right, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. This part, getting the back plate off, kind of took me a bit. You can even kind of see I have this guitar pick tool thing. Look how beat up it is. Because they make it hard, you really gotta squeeze it in. You wanna squeeze it between the back plate and the actual chassis itself to try and get it up. You, you will eventually get it, but there will be some fear of breaking your laptop, but just know that you're, you're probably good as long as you're gentle and there's the inside. All right, next they want me to take off the battery, the power to the battery. I think that's what this is here. I don't think, I know, cause I can see it, but like, uh, let me see if I can do that right here. It's between two stickers, one clear and one black. And they want you to take these little prior tools and see if you can get it. I'm kind of just wiggling. Let me, uh zoom in and show you there it is that is the connector that we just took off yep. all right next they want us to take out the fan and to do so you got to remove the power cable here and there's also one here on the right fan let me see if i can do that without blowing it up i think i can get in there yeah there we go cool that's one plugged out the other one does not have a sticker. I'm not sure if that's because this is a refurbished model. Could be. This one's coming out a lot easier. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, cool. All right, I'm just gonna take out these two screws that are securing the fan here. I think this is a magnetic screwdriver. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So that's taken off. All right. All right, next they want us to take out these heatsink screws. These are labeled, you can't really see it. Uh, there are seven screws in total. I'm not gonna take them out on the first go. I'm kinda gonna loosen them a little bit in order. Uh, and then eventually I'll see if I can get this thing off. Okay, so I'm gonna try to take them out fully now. Okay, that's not out yet. What's going on? Are you stuck? First roadblock? What's going on here? I hear it hitting the thread. It should be out, but it's not out. What's going on there?
Okay, I don't think they're intended to come out. I think they just stay in there. So <laughs> that's how you know I'm new to this. Okay, so there is one screw that I didn't unscrew. I'm gonna put it next to the fans and see if this heat sink will come out. Oh, there, there, there it goes. Okay. All right. We're making progress. A little bit spooky, but we're getting there. Okay. Look at that. There's all the putty and that liquid metal. The application actually isn't too bad, but we still want to get rid of it if we can. So we're going to try and do that. All right. I definitely just straight up lied. Okay. Because upon closer inspection, you can see that the liquid metal is already squeezed out of where it should be. You know, you see that's the dye right there and everything is kind of squeezed out. We're gonna try and clean that up and replace it with our nice PTM 7950. All right, so I've just got a Q-tip here covered in 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm gonna try to wipe down this liquid metal. This stuff is pretty cool, it's like mercury. I saw a guy kind of roll the Q-tip and pick it up that way, but I'm almost getting it by rolling it. Yeah, there we go, okay. There we go, yeah. I don't know what that blue stuff is. I don't think it's thermal paste, I think it's a barrier. I think it's extra insurance, just so that the liquid metal doesn't leak out, like it kind of leaked out already. <laughs> but I, because liquid metal is conductive, they really don't want this stuff to leak onto the motherboard itself because then you might have an issue. What I'm doing too is kind of rolling the Q-tip between my fingers so that there are no loose strands that get caught up in this thing and burn. <laughs> that would also be bad. We go, come on. Yeah, look at that big piece. Imagine I just dropped it <laughs> on my motherboard. Oh, that'd be tragic. Okay, we're getting there. It looks pretty clean. I'm sure there are like little beads. I'm gonna try and get those and then we can try to work on the other side, which I think is a regular thermal paste. I think that's the GPU. All right, let's see if we can work on this blue stuff. I have a little squeegee. I don't know what this is. I really should see if I can find a resource as to what this is because I'm really just assuming that it's a barrier, but it really could be thermal paste that I should reapply, but I do not know. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's thermal paste though, simply because it isn't really, it's not uniform. You know, it doesn't seem to be covering anything specific. So I think it's just a barrier. Also, it's blue. And I feel like if it was thermal paste, they might have stuck with whatever pink stuff they've been using on everything else. Hopefully I'm right about that. I don't know. I mean, by the time I post this, maybe someone more knowledgeable than me will have posted another video doing the same thing. But I think, I think I'm just gonna wipe this off with a little cloth to get the rest. But yeah, that looks pretty clean to me. All right. Okay, so the CPU die is clean. What I'm gonna do is take a picture of where the thermal putty was, that's the pink stuff, where it was on the VRAM and everywhere else. Uh, so I can reapply some new putty I have here. Uh, this stuff, I got this off AliExpress. I'm just gonna take some, roll it up, and put it on the dies, or the VRAM, and see how that goes. Okay, so I got most of it cleaned. I'm not gonna be too anal about it, right? There's the heat sink. Uh, what I did was I took this, here it is, PTM7950, and cut it up to fit the die of the CPU and GPU. Uh, it's on there. I didn't record it because I was too scared. <laughs> I 
didn't want to like distract myself, but Linus has a video on it. If you want to see that, it's pretty easy. I just applied some of that new putty, right? But the thing I noticed was there wasn't any, there was no like dye or any type of heat sink or anything here. It was just like PCB. But according to the heat sink, there was putty here. So I kind of just put it there. I don't know what the purpose of that is. But everything else is covered and the PTM 7950 are on the GPU and CPU. So what I'm gonna try to do is put the heat sink back on without fucking anything up, put the fans back in, plug them back in, plug the battery back in, and see if this shit actually turns on. We'll see. Okay, so heat sink is screwed back in, fans are plugged in, batteries plugged in, and that is pretty much everything. You can see the putty over there, that was what was in there initially, and you can see some of that new putty squeezing out. Uh, at this point, you want to open up the laptop, like right now, <laughs> and turn it on to see if it works. I just did it, and it does, so I'm going to put the back plate on, and then we're going to see what we can do. I kind of realize now that I don't really need the reference of my phone for the thermal putty. I can just do this with the camera on, so it's an actual helpful video. I know it wasn't that helpful for people that are trying to follow this step by step, but, uh, you know try to do what I can uh, I was expecting a snap uh, doesn't look like I'm gonna get it let me see if yeah everything's lined up okay so I'm gonna just screw this back in and turn it on and then after this after I turn it on uh, to get good temps with PTM 7950 you have to like cook it which means you gotta run a benchmark for about like five or eight cycles I think is what it is you want to really heat it up and get that that thermal paste really accustomed to like 90 celsius and then back to like room temp eight times or so and then after that you should be seeing uh normal temps from you know your run-of-the-mill thermal paste and that should be expected to last you know anywhere from well really <laughs> indefinitely if i'm being honest uh but yeah let me go screw this in and see what we got by the way, here is the box for the PTM 7950. You can see it cut there. I I think I bought, what size was this? Does it tell me? Yeah, it tells me. See, I bought the uh, 80 by 40 millimeter and I used like, what? 15% of it. So you can really get away with the cheaper stuff. I bought the bigger one because I felt like I might have needed to do a repaste and I still might need to because I didn't test it quite yet but after I cook it I'm gonna see if we get some good temps and then if we're good we're good right we got it kind of spooky overall but you know if we could do it once we could do it twice I'm just gonna clean up I'm gonna put this on my cooler that I have and benchmark it a few times let it cook and then see what kind of temps we get all right, let me just turn on the camera so y'all can see what I'm doing. <laughs> this is a program called Fermark. We're gonna use it to try and cook that thermal paste. And the laptop is actually on a cooler you can see there. That is a Lano cooler. There are plenty of videos on that. I'll probably link one in the description, but we're using this program to cook that PTM 7950. You can see the GPU is at 72 and the CPU is at 75. That doesn't really mean anything because I can control the temperature. But what we're doing is we're trying to get up to like 60, 70 degrees. We want to leave it there for about an hour or two. Then you want to let it cool for 30 minutes to an hour. And that's one cycle. Apparently for optimal results, you want to leave it there or you want to do the cycles of up to eight times. And then you should start seeing like normal temperatures when you're doing your regular stuff. You don't have to do eight. Apparently I've heard you can get away with three cycles. I'm gonna go ahead and do eight. <laughs> And then probably tomorrow or something, we'll do a real test with like a real game. But that's what's going on. Just want to let y'all know. All right, y'all. It is a new day. And you can see that we're getting some consistent temperatures here. Here's the CPU. This is pretty much the history of the game I just played. You can see we're averaging around like 80, 80-ish, right? Uh, for the GPU, we're averaging around 56, 60, you know, pretty good. Uh, Really, you really only get into trouble when you're getting up into like 95. Uh, so I think this is pretty good, you know, for the purposes of longevity. I think it's a success. We did it. Shit didn't blow up. So there you go. It works. <laughs> it's the thing you can do. 
So yeah, hopefully uh, you found this helpful.